And there's 21 data values here, 21 scores, there's 21 in here, because I can see it's, and when you look at the, it's telling me this is at location 22, so that means that was location 21. Looks like I didn't miss any numbers, and that's good. And then I'm just going to hit quit. Once I got all this in here, I'll just hit quit. So I'm going to do that now. When second mode is quit, right? Now, uh, do you remember the cool button on the calculator to give me all these? It even has the Q1s and the Q2, the Q2 and the Q, I mean the Q, Q1 and the Q3. It's one variable stats. So I'll go to the stat button. Error to calc. Hit enter. And everyone, I can just hit enter now. It knows to read L1. I'm going to do something though. Let's say you're, you like keeping things in certain columns. If I hit on my, you don't have to do this, but if I hit second three on this front screen, L3, and I hit enter, which column will the calculator read? L3. But I'm not going to put that, so I'm just going to hit delete right now just to clear that thing out. Stat calc one. One variable stats. I'm going to hit enter. If I don't hit anything, the default is it knows to read which list? L1. It will know, the calculator will know to read L1, right? But if you ever lose a list, and you can't find me to help you get it back, just put everything in L2 and just put an L2 after that. You can find it on the front screen. All right, let's put these numbers down. Um, I don't see them, though. Where are they? I need to use the down arrow. Very good. You got to use the down arrow. All right, let me, down arrow. All right, there's the min. 19.95. I guess I can hit the lights now. 19.95. This is in minutes. And then the Q1. Oops, that was the that was the min 19.95. The Q1 was 26.055. The median is 30.95. The Q3 is 37.24. And then yeah, the max 54.63 minutes. And there they are. The five number summary. That's it. You can use technology to come up with your five number summary. Of course, we could do it by hand as well, if you prefer. You have like a scientific calculator. I know. I'm going to use that. Not hard to do. Any questions on that? So, hey, in your notes, we're done with 3 4. We're now going to 3 5. Well, what's that on? Box plots. Ah. Uh, um, I bet a lot of you had box plots before. You probably heard them as box and whisker plots. You heard of that? Yeah, we'll just call them box plots. This is another way to represent data. Now, when I made fun of uh, stem and leaf plots, they're kind of lame. Box plots are pretty cool. Box plots tell us stuff when we look at the image that we don't see in like a histogram that you won't see in some of those other displays. You know, the pie chart, histograms, we get a lot of those. Box plots are pretty cool. Well, we're going to build one. So we're going to talk about the step-by-step -step procedure to come up with a box plot. Now, a couple times already in this course, I've mentioned the word outlier. But so far, I'm just saying, what's an outlier? Some data value that's just way, way out there, right? Maybe really, really high or really, really low compared to all the other numbers. Well, today we can come up with a math formula to determine whether or not we have outliers. Isn't that cool? So there's actually an actual math formula for that. So we're going to construct a box plot of the data values we have. So I'm going to construct a box plot for all the data we have. It was data on page, was it 175? Yes. So I just want to let you know, so if in your nature, like, where do we construct this box plot? How, where do we start? Well, like, we use the data that was located on there. So you go to them tonight, you could construct your own box plot. If you have the data, you find the data on the internet. So it's a nice data table that we use that had the 21 values. Well, these are the numbers we use to build our box plot. First thing is, how about step one? We have to make a scale. We need a scale, everyone. I don't care if you scale it at the top or the bottom, but I'm looking, what's the lowest number about? Yeah, close to 20, 19.95. The highest got up to about 54.63. I'm thinking of my scale, everyone. When I nail my scale, I'm going to start at like 15. And I'm just going to go by fives, and every five I'll make a tick mark. 15, 20, 
20. 25, 30. 35, I'm just trying to spread these out evenly, going by fives. 40, if you want to put separate tick marks each time, you can. 45, 50. 55, I think that's as far as I have to go, huh? Yeah, this is spread out roughly evenly. That's good enough. <laughs> there we go. All right, that's good. There's my scale. If you want to use a ruler, that's even better. You put these little tick marks. If you want to put the 16, 17, 18, 19 there, you can. That's our scale. All right. So now we're going to build this box plot. We're going to construct it. We'll create it. Where do you start? And when we're going to start with the Q1. The median and the Q3. That's the next step. So after you made your scale, you go, what's step two? Go find your Q1, your median, and your Q3. We're going to put vertical lines. Okay, all right, what's the Q1? 26.05? That would be about right here. I'm just going to go a little bit up, maybe right here, and I'm just going to put a vertical line. That's it. <laughs> here, I'll label it. Your Q1. Just a tiny, tiny vertical line. Where's the median? Oh, 30.95. Do the same thing. Make a vertical line right at 30.95. That's about right here. I like to always label these. There's my Q1. There's my median. You might put the numbers too here. 26.055. You, you were 30.95. One more vertical line I need. The Q3. Where's that? 37.24. All right, that's about right here. Q3. And then build a box, which is a rectangle. Just build a rectangle with those. It doesn't matter how wide your rectangle is. That's the box. So we're almost done with the box plot. But we're not yet done. The rest of this stuff's important. So that's the box. But no, that's the first step, right? Get my scale, these three numbers. No, no, no. Make a rectangle. Cool? I'm okay with that? All right. You go, what's the next step? Didn't I call this a box and whisker plot? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get these whiskers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> these whiskers are going to come off here. Like that. We're going to draw whiskers to see how far it kind of shows a representation of the data. But on our next step, it's not the whiskers. There's something we got to do to figure out how long we're going to, how far we're going to put these whiskers in terms of Okay. Starting from here. The distance, I'm going to draw it out. So, once I finish my box, would you put this down? My next step is to find the fences. I call them fence lines. To find your fences. That's the next step. I can't draw the whiskers without my fences. I need the fences. Okay. Do you have formulas for the fences? Oh, I sure do. <laughs> so, there's an upper fence. Way over here somewhere, there's a lower fence. What are these fences for? Are you ready? Any value that's outside the fence lines are outliers. So now we have a definition for outliers. Any value that's in that data set that's outside the fence lines is an outlier. That's why we're putting these, that's why we're getting these fence lines. They're called fences. I call them fence lines, because in our day we're gonna look at them as like some some vertical line. So any value outside the fences. What do you mean, like outside the fence line? From here, here's all the data. Data is in here, but you can have these fences. If it's outside of it, outlier. If the fence is over here, if it's way over here, it's an outlier. You can have low outliers and high outliers. So is the fence from 1995 to 54653 in this case? Yeah, when we build this fence, it's considering that scale. But watch, sometimes, don't be throwing all of our, you do your math, you get a fence that's like negative value. You go, oh, okay. You might draw your, hey, here's my fence. It's over here. Which means you're probably not going to have any outliers over there. But it all depends on the data that you have. So what's the form? I'm going to start with the upper fence. I'm going to put it over here because the upper fence is on this side. U out for upper fence equals, it's based off the Q3. The upper court dot Q3 plus 1.5 IQR. And I know you're sitting there right now going, 
What the heck is IQR? I haven't told you, I gotta tell you. But I'll let you write it down. I mean, that's the math formula for the upper fence. It's gonna be Q3, that number right there, plus 1.5 multiplied to the IQR. So what the heck is the IQR? The IQR stands for the inner quartile range. I'll say that again. IQR stands for the inner quartile range. So if you're not going to get this upper fence value, do this math. I know what Q3 is, but we need this IQR. We've got to do that first, don't we? Uh -huh. That's okay. We can do it, then we'll get the Q3. So the inner quartile range. Now, it has a math formula. I just have a feeling a lot of you in this class know what it has to be. Do you remember the word range? Mm -hmm. Range was max minus min. min. So if this is titled the inner quartile range, which two do you think you're subtracting? Q3 minus Q1. The quartiles. So in the formula for the inner quartile range is Q3 minus Q1. It's Q3 minus Q1. It's called IQR. Nice acronym, right? Easy to say, IQR. Hey, that's on a formula sheet. It is, so you can use it. Hey, what do we get then? What's the IQR? Oh, I heard 11.185. 185, and I heard two of you got that? So everyone, they got, they took this number, and they subtracted that number. They took this number here, subtracted this, they got the inner quartile range. It's always positive, because you're taking an upper minus a lower. It's always going to be a positive number. So I'm going to do the math here for the upper fence. The upper fence will be 37.24 plus 1.5. And when you want to talk like a statistician, listen how I say this. Q3 plus 1.5 IQRs, plural, like standard deviations, plural. That's how they talk. They talk them as like IQRs, <laughs> interquartile ranges, IQRs. So I'm going to 37.24 plus 1.5 IQRs. Well, IQR was 11.185. All right, what do you all get? Ooh, thank you. 54.01. Oh, okay. I'll see what other people get. Right there, though. You're right there. <coughs> That's two. 54.01. All right. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the upper fence. Now, what do I do? Everyone, you look through the textbook, you won't see any markings for an upper fence. But I, I'm telling you, everyone, I think we should mark, mark it somewhere. I mean, come on now. We did all this hard work to find it. I want to, a fence is like a fence. We can see a fence. Should we make, let's make some marking. This is what I do. I just make a light, light dash. Almost like a dotted line, just to represent that fence. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go over which 54.01? Is that right here? Mm -hmm. So I'm going 50, I'm thinking 51, 52, 53, 55. Right here, I'm just going to go like this. I use the yellow chalk, too. I'm title is UF. Does the book do this? No. I think we should make some marking. Because what, what did we say earlier about outliers? Any data value that's what? Outside the fence line, it's an outlier. So I bet you already recognize, I think we have an outlier in this group. Mm -hmm. The slope over. <laughs> mid. That'd be mid. This, this, this dude right here, everyone, I think he's an outlier, right? He's an outlier. I don't know if there's others. I have to go back and look. But I know for sure he's higher than that. So we're going to have an outlier. Now let's do the other fence. What's the lower fence for? It's similar to this, everyone, but it's not going to have a plus. It's going to have a minus, the lower fence. And it's not going to be Q3. We're going to use the Q1. Q1. All right? So I'm going to go over here. Can I erase the IQR work? Remember, the IQR was 11.185. So I'm now going to get the lower fence. And the lower fence is, here, just call it LF. LF equals Q1 minus 1.5 IQRs. So I'll take the 26.055 minus 1.5 times 11.185. So, so Art, if this came out negative, don't be shocked. It's just... <laughs> We're going to say there's no outliers on that side. We'll just put a 
offense. It's him 9.27. What was it? 9.27. And look, it's outside our scale even. Isn't it? Right. Right? When we, we just started creating a scale earlier, it, that's totally normal. It's just at 9.27, I'm going to put a dashed line with the yellow chalk. So I do have to extend the scale a little bit. I'll go out here to 10. And then right before that 10, I'm building a fence. There's a fence line right here. The lower fence. It's my LF. But I went, did anybody run this race faster than nine minutes? No outliers over here. But we do have an outlier over there. See, sometimes, I mean, yeah, we know this. Just some people are just really fast up there. He's an outlier. She's an outlier. She can run the 5K in 10 minutes. In this case, you had to do it faster than nine minutes, though. <laughs> I'm a great job so far. Everyone okay with the fence line? Hey, so just recap the steps because we're going to get the whiskers in a second. I guess I built a scale. I built my rectangle off these three numbers. My next step, I found my two fence lines. I found the upper fence, lower fence. The formulas are provided on the formula sheet, and I find these values. And we know anything beyond the fence line is an outlier, right? So finally, I get to draw the whiskers. Okay, not hard at all. I will return to my white chalk. I only use the yellow chalk for the upper fence lines. And I go right off the middle here and I draw a whisker. Now this is where students get confused. So I just want to be clear on this. And let me know if you have any questions. Just raise your hand. I'm going to draw this whisker. I'm like, okay, well how far are you going? Start it out, I'm going to start drawing. You go, well, how far are you going? Students mistakenly think that you always draw it to the fence line. That is false. That is false. You go, where am I going to? I have to go back and look at the data. I'm going to start drawing my whisker. I'm going to go to the value. I'm going to draw up to the value that is closest to but within the fence line. Can I say that again? Mm -hmm. I'm going to draw this whisker and keep going.